cooking now. Mm -hmm. All right. We're cooking with gas. Today we get to study Torah for the sake of heaven, for the sake of Torah itself. Um, we'd like to thank God for his Torah. Blessed are you, Hashem, our God, King of the universe, giver of the Torah, and may all the Torah we learn today we remember. Amen. We'd like to dedicate our Torah study to John Culver, Catherine, Yehuda Chai Ben Matai Leah, Sam Peake, Yona Barrett, Susan Lipson, Rusty Gerhardt, and anybody else? You know, I'll get on that list pretty quick. And let's put Russell Kirk on the list. And uh, since we do read from the Ari, from the Zohar, we will say the prayer of the Ari. Ruler of the universe and master of all masters, the father of mercy and forgiveness, we thank you, our God, the God of our fathers, by bowing down and kneeling that you brought us closer to your Torah and your holy work. And you enable us to take part in the secrets of your holy Torah. How worthy are we that you grant us with such, big uh, with such a big favor. That is the reason we plead before you that you will forgive and acquit all of our sins and that they should not bring separation between you and us. May it be your will before you, our God and the God of our fathers, that you will awaken and prepare our hearts to love and revere you. And may you listen to our utterances and open our closed hearts to the hidden studies of your Torah. And may our study be pleasant before your place of honor as an aroma of sweet incense. And may you emanate to us light from the source of our soul to all of our being. And may the sparks of your holy servants through which you revealed your wisdom to the world shine. May their merit and the merit of, our, of the fathers and the merit of their Torah and holiness support us so we shall not stumble through our study. And by the merit by their merit enlighten our eyes and in uh, and, and our learning as stated by King David the sweet singer of Israel um, open my eyes so that I will see the wonders of from your Torah because from his mouth God gives wisdom and understanding may the utterances of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart find favor before you God my strength and my redeemer Amen Amen all righty. Vayi Krah. <coughs> now, online today we have John and Jason. And. He's on here. Nobody is on there. Linda probably hadn't came. I guess I could check Skype and see if we have any Skypers that are online that needed to get on. So you join in the. I he, doesn't, he doesn't know anything about it. He just said he's going to go over here. Me too. I think I'm going to. <laughs> you want to see John? Yeah. He said he just decided to start going. I don't know. I mean, just like that. I don't know what's happened to all my contacts. And he, he's had a beard for forever, and it doesn't grow. It grows? Well, it goes. I'm Aboriginal. It goes this way. <laughs> but you get it to the neck. See, the neck is uh, Guru. And that's where it is. Mm -hmm. Alright. Okay. Now, for everybody that has uh, read their Parsha, I hope everybody has read their Parsha. We will, uh, the, the, the last three Parshas that we've, that we've studied here are, are kind of a culmination of running together. The secret of the cloud that Moses entered that was on the mountain, the secret of the cloud that was on the tabernacle that he couldn't enter, and what is going on with the... Uh, with with this cloud, and, and we're gonna we're gonna go through go through some of that today. But just know that the cloud is the perfection of the Shekhinah, and when God is in union with the Shekhinah, you may not enter. So, uh, how did Mo the secret is how did Moshe 
get in in the cloud for 40 days, 40 nights on, on the mountain. Um, the Torah says that God grabbed him by the arm and pulled him in. And so, um, and, and then it says that, that Moses wants to see God's face and, uh, and he says, you can't see my face. And then he comes back around and he tells everybody, oh, no, 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 me and Moses, we speak face to face. So <clears throat> you're always seeing this, this side and that side, and this side and that side, and, and it n never seems to make sense, although it is all the secret of the Torah. And we're going to see another situation in this week's Harsha. Now, um... At the beginning of the Parsha, it says, He called to Moses. And if you remember, the last at, at the last week, the secret of the cloud. And the cloud covered the tent of meeting. This is in Pekude. The cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory, or the kavod, of Hashem filled the tabernacle. And then and when it means filled, it means utterly filled. There was no room for anything. Therefore, Moses couldn't go in. And Moses could not enter the tent of meeting. So all these things going on, and then all of a sudden, what leads to Vayikra is this word, he called him. He called him in. So in other words, you cannot enter unless you are called. So it wasn't that Moses couldn't go in. He couldn't go in until he was asked to come in. You know? Yeah. So he called, and, it, and, it, and, it, and here, is, here is one of the one of the things that is goes on in, in, in the Hebrew. Um, Vayikra means he called. But Yikra means he will call. So within the word he called is the word he will call. So this is past, present, future. The whole Torah is past, present, future. As, as we have seen, it just rolls and rolls and rolls. The story iterates itself. So not only did he call Moses here, he's going to call Moshe again. And, yeah, yeah. and it's encrypted right here in the word by Yikra. Now, um, the secret to this is something that Teresa found. And Teresa, tell the class what you found. Okay, the very first word at Levit Leviticus 1.1 1, 1, in Hebrew has a very, the very last letter is a small olive. Right. And that is significant to the way Moses is, I mean, Hashem speaks to Moses. Right. He's speaking to him kindly as, um, with mercy. Right. Where in other words, in, in God's prophecy, uh, and he's using uh, judgment like he speaks to Balaam, but he's he's not. He's he's merciful. He's he's asking Moses to come in like, on a friendly basis. I mean, you know what I mean, like that. All right. So it That's sets good. the mood for the whole. It sets the mood exactly. Now, I thought it was interesting Hebrew, that Balaam came up again. In, in, in Hebrew. <laughs> Uh, and, and I'm going to use the English so everybody can understand. You have a capital A and a little a, right? In Hebrew, there's no such thing. All of the letters are the same size. So let me write this. That would be an A and an A. And, but in Hebrew, all the letters are, let's say, like that. They're all kind of the same size. And... You know, so if you wrote Yud, Hey, because Yud small, Vav, Hey, you know, they're all the same size. Except in Torah, you will find there are 22 letters of the Aleph Bet. There are 22 instances in Torah when you will see a big, or a small letter. Now, <clears throat> this alludes to what's going on. 
And most people, when they read Genesis, bear sheep, they see a capital B in the beginning. That's yeah. not denoting a capital. There's something going on. There's a large bet there. Mm -hmm. And other place in Torah, you will find there will be a small bet. All right? The large bet is Berea. Because creation comes from Berea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Through the thought of God, Berea. And then goes to Yetzirah where he forms it, and then Asiya, the completion. So it's letting you know where the whole thing is starting. Now, here, all of a sudden, we have a small olive. <coughs> we have a small A. Now, throughout Scripture, it looks like it I, I, and 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 if, if you read through the Torah, all the time you'll see, and and God said to Moses, nobody starts a sentence like that. And God said to Moses. That's not how you start a sentence. With a vav, or you know, you don't start a sentence like that. You know, and he called to Moses. You, that's not how you would really start an, an American sentence. You know? So this this tells us things things are going on. So he, he's calling to Moses here, and he speak to the children of Israel. When a man among you brings an offering to Hashem. Now, before we see women and men, but when it says man, it says Adam. Right. When uh, Adam, so when man and women, that's, that's when they're together. When an Adam among you brings an offering to Hashem from animals. Okay, so... So what has just happened? They've had the golden calf. They've, they've, they've fallen. And God is instructing Moses how to fix it. First thing you have to do is have a place to fix it with. This is the whole thing of the tabernacle and all, the, and all of the uh, uh, utensils and, and the altar and, and all this. And so this whole Parsha then goes into from... From the animals, from the cattle, from the flock, you shall bring your offerings. Now, if you read it real, real close, everything will start iterating on itself. One, if one's offering is an elevation offering, there's your key. He's talking about elevations. Okay. He's raising something up from something below. Elevation offering. All right. And if you read through down to verse nine. After he goes through this whole thing, and it says, a fire offering, a satisfying aroma to Hashem. Then he starts off in verse 10. And that's from, that's from a, a cow. Then if you go to the flock, and you bring your whole flock. And then it says, a fire offering satisfied to Hashem. Then it goes to the elevation offering of the fowl, of the birds. And then it ends, and a fire offering satisfying aroma to Hashem. Then it starts in chapter 2. Then if you bring flour and oil. And it goes through, and it, and it ends in verse 3, a fire offering, a sweet aroma to Hashem. Mm -hmm. Then it goes through the meal offering. Then it goes, um, then it says a fire, uh, then, it, then it stops and says, then you should not prepare anything leavened, you shouldn't mix the leaven, you shouldn't do the fruit and honey, for this is not a sweet aroma, fire offering to Hashem. Then it goes on, and salt. Blah, 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 blah. All right? So he's he's going through every form of elevation. If, if you look in, in chapter 3, you bring a peace offering, and it does this and does that. A fire offering satisfying to Hashem in verse 5. Mm -hmm. Then you go on. If you bring a goat in verse 12, verse chapter 3, verse 12, if you bring a goat, blah, blah, blah. Uh, 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 food for the fire, uh, fire or satisfying aroma. And you do all these things, all right? So, what what is he what is he conveying here? And that's what we're gonna figure out. And this whole parsha is about that type of thing: elevation offerings, elevation offerings. What what is he trying to elevate? <clears throat> Rewind back to the golden calf. Yonas and Yambers, the sorcerers. What were they doing? 
they were trying to resurrect or elevate the soul of their grandfather from Balaam, Laban, and all that deal from that side of the of the Guvarot evil side of Tohu. All right, that was trapped. Where was he trapped? He was trapped in the grass. So they made a cow that could eat the grass. That and then his spark, his his spark, assumed the cow. And once it assumed the cow, and it was elevated, it was it was on the edge of wasn't in absolute. It was on the edge of. Then it spoke. And it was it was this persona, all right. And so he made them grind it up back in the water, made them drink it, made them eat it, all right. What caused the fall at Adam? Eating. Eating. What's the fix? Eating. Of course, we know eating is also knowing. So there's 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 not only the sexual component going on there, but it is also the physical eating component going on. And this is what this Parsha is doing. It is going through every level of inanimate, mineral, mm -hmm. salt, um, which is a sia, yitzira, which is the flour and the oil. Then it's going uh, it's a vegetable, and then which is the vegetable. Then it's going to the animal, and then the blessing that's given over at the verbal is the the highest level, which is you know the, the person, which is the soul, which is the nishama, which is the top. All right, it's not ever going to get to yichai. It's just never going to get there because that's a recon pin. You know, my little measly brain that I have going on here. It didn't dawn on me till today when I was reading this that you killed your own. Mm -hmm. I thought they took him up there no. and because you always read it so fast. Yeah. And and they slit the, they put the hand on the throat and the the sons of uh, Aaron take him off and do this and this this. When I slowed down to read it, it's like you hold, you hold it, your you hand. put your hands on you it, you slice yes. the neck. It's like yeah. ooh, that's so, a new meaning. It does. There yeah. is the the, the secret. Uh, Aleph is numerical value one. Aleph, numerical value a thousand. Malchut is one. Keter is a thousand. Mm -hmm. So, who is the little Aleph? This is the little Aleph that could. <laughs> Moses, Moses, who is the big A, who is the little A, uh -huh. Adam. Uh -huh. Now, what happens? Moses has to go up. He becomes the 1,000. Right. But because of the sin of the golden calf... Come in. But because of the sin of the golden calf, Moses, Moses is adorned with a with a thousand crown lights, with a thousand crowns. Mm -hmm. And so what does he have to do? Because everything's fixed to be destroyed. He has to go down and he has to give them nine hundred and ninety-nine lights to keep them alive. This is the secret of Shabbat. What do we know about 999? Mashiach ben Yosef. And? Metatron? No. No. Mashiach ben Joseph, Yosef and Mashiach ben? David. David. That's the gematria of Mashiach ben Yosef and Mashiach ben David. Mm -hmm. All right? And so... 999 or 1,000 is? I thought... Well, we once you get the 1,000th... That's David. That will eat, that will culminate and finish the David. Now I got you. Okay, I got you. Finished. Now, complete David. Now that was the that will complete David. Now uh, I'm I'm not going to get too too deep into this, but in the word Vayikra, it's also fixing the higher temple. The Kuf and the Resh are angel names under Michael that are covering the A and Vayikra. They're covering the A 
And then, and then the next word is Moshe, the final mem, that's from Bina. And so anyway, not only is not only is this whole thing fixing everything below, the whole thing is it's fixing everything above because the, because the carbonate, the, the sacrifices, mm -hmm. go up, and that's what is that's what feeds the upper realms, because we're we're doing each realm, Atzilut, Yitzira. And it, it goes with the souls, the nefesh, the ruach, all the way up. So this is what's going on. Now, um, <clears throat> the what's called the little chokmah, the little aleph, zerah chokmah, little aleph. This is the shechina. So this is indicating because the Shekhinah is Malchut, right? Mm -hmm. That's one. That's the little olive. This is indicating that she called to Moses. Although it is written, he called to Moses, it is she called to Moses. She is, the secret is the little olive. If you know the little yeah, olive right. is the Shekhinah, you know that hidden within there is a zivu, zivu union. Yes, he and his name are one, so you can write he, but it's her that called to Moshe. This is the secret of take your shoes off for your own holy ground. Because removing your shoes is when you, because your shoes are machut, that's the bottom, right. that's your feet. He was now going to be in union with the Shekhinah. And that was his foreshadowing to this moment. That's what Miriam and everything, they got mad because he put his wife away. Mm -hmm. Zephora. And this is why. Because she called to Moshe. Now, um, the, the, the Korban, uh, and, and Moses becomes Zeron Pin at this time. The Korban, which, which is the, the actual sacrifice, is is uh, means to bring close to. So when you're doing a sacrifice, this is what's bringing you closer to God. Now, since there's not a temple anymore, there's a fail-safe mechanism. One is prayer, and uh, and the other is uh, union, uh, marital union, because these are the uh, essence of knowing. 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 Um, it is small because it is modest. It is concealing herself. When they use big olives, they use big olives like at the start of the Ten Commandments. Um, that's when the big, a big olive was used at, when it was at the Ten Commandments. So. If he's entering into the small olive, when you enter into the small olive, you are in the big olive. So this whole this whole thing is one. What is the secret of an olive? Can some can somebody who uh, Teresa, you know how to write a Hebrew olive? Mm -hmm. Okay, come up here and come up here on the board and and draw an <coughs> olive. Perfect. What do we see here? We see a yud. Oh, sorry. Uh -huh. We see a yud, uh -huh. and we see another yud. Uh -huh. Russell, what's the numerical value of yud? Ten. And what's this in the middle? Vav. A vav. Which is. Do we know? What the gematria of 26 is. Yes. What is it? yud hey vav hey. That's the secret of the little olive. Hmm. It is yud hey vav hey. And everything that comes with the name. That is the secret of Moshe. The word Moshe is absolute. When you see absolute, 
you can might as well say Moses. Because he is the culmination of yud Vavhe. vav He He's the little Aleph. Now. But I thought you just said the Shekinah was a little Aleph. Yes. But when they are together, when Zeronpin <laughs> and the Nukva are together, well, when you're not too late, there's one thing. Just yeah. one thing. There's just one thing there. Because uh, the numerical yeah. value of Aleph is one. One. That's the, uh, that's the secret to the, to the number one. It's the secret to everything. Now, there is the 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 word uh, Aleph is is uh, one plus thirty plus eighty, which is uh, Aleph Lamet Pei. I believe it's what it is. Um, it's Gematria 111. This Gematria 111 is the same as Masve. Masve in Hebrew means a mask. And when Moses is, is, is eluding the big olive, he's glowing because of the, because of the lights that were given to him in this union, and therefore he had to put a mas bay over his face, a veil, a covering, because of this transmission of light. Um, Moshe lost the thousand at the golden calf. He lost his elef. Now he is Aleph. So the need for Kabanot was introduced because Israel had lost their crowns. Moses gave up his 999 to the light to lights to the children of Israel to keep them alive, functioning as one little Aleph. Now I know y'all heard me talk about this before. This is another, uh, I don't want to bore you with gematrias, but it's pretty cool. Uh, uh, Moses, is, Moses is Mim, right? Moses and uh, the minister of the face, the part Sufim of the faces. Minister of Sahar Panim. Uh -huh. All right? So Metatron... Sarha Pani. Anybody remember what the gematria of Metatron was? Remember it's 358. It's no. 314. 314. Right? 314. Sar is 500. Hapanin? Hapanin? <laughs> Nine nine nine. Mm -hmm. It's even in his name. Or his title. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Moshe's title. Alright? So that's just another So that, what what are you saying here? Uh, Moses is Metatron? Well, yeah. At that at, at, at that stage. But then he took so he took at that stage, he at this stage you're talking about he was. Then when he lost his Aleph, or Elif, he, he, Yeah, he lost his Elif. He lost his Elif, and it made it 999, but he gave 999 to, to, Israel, to Israel. And made Israel Mashiach ben Yosef. Yes, and Mashiach ben David collectively. Yes. To keep them alive. Mm -hmm. He did it to save them. In other, words, in other words, the dad gave the children all the so food they in the did, house. They did it with... with uh, uh, Esau and Jacob, who was the collective Mashiach ben Yosef and Mashiach ben David, is the same thing that was happening here. Yeah, it's just a story reiterating itself once again. Which is, which is Nachash and Mashiach. It's the same gematria. Three fifty-eight. Yeah. So, um, when the Sabbath comes out. Moses, Moses gets his light back. In other words, Moses gives this light to Israel on Shabbat. This is the secret of the Sabbath. When you gain the light, 
of God. When you get an extra soul added to you, when you get the neshama, when you get the higher soul, when Shabbat goes out, Moses gets his light back. That is why the Sabbath is the only thing on this earth that is real. And that's why they say that if every Jew did Shabbat would do at the same, Shabbat, at that's the why. Same time. That's right. Mm -hmm. This is why it would immediately flip. Mm -mm -mm. This is exactly why. This is the secret of the olive. Even on Shabbat, the fires of Gehenna go out. Now that I have heard. That is how. That is the only day off they have in Gehenna, is on Shabbat. Because it is so powerful. It's the only thing real. <laughs> See, you don't keep Shabbat. Shabbat keeps you. That's the secret of Shabbat. And this is the secret of Psalm 92 that you read on Shabbat. And I found some real cool stuff in the Zohar that we will, we will go over. This is when the Neshama descends. This, this is the first four words. A song for the Sabbath day. The first letters in Hebrew in Psalm 92, a song for the Sabbath day, read the Moshe. For Moses is absolute. He is the Shabbat. The Ari says, absolute is called Yom Shabbat. It is, it is male and it is compared to the Nukva. In other words, in other words, the Nukva on that day is Berea Yitzira Asiya, the other three lower worlds. Shabbat is absolute, the higher world, on that day. Yeah, so you're saying that uh, absolute is called Mo it's, it's Moses. It is Moses, and, and Moses is Shabbat. And Moses is Shabbat, but it's uh, it's um, so that makes absolute Shabbat. Yes, yes. So the the code word for absolute is Moses, and and Moses is. The, is the entire light of the Sabbath. And the three lower worlds. Because he's Zah. He's there on being. What's, what's, what's going on on Shabbat? The male is in union with female. What happened here? And she called to Moses. Mm -hmm. Just like when you, when you in, uh, call for the Sabbath queen in on the Sabbath day. You know, she's there and, you know, she's going to call to Moses. Now, we learn this in Chronicles that Moses was given a thousand likes. He is the big A, the big Adam. He's the big Olive, micro and macro. It, it, he, it was he that was given this. He was now Adam from Olive to Eleph, from one to a thousand, from the beginning to the end. <clears throat> The little Aleph is every day, but the big Aleph is Shabbat. Now, this is the secret of the Tzimtzum. This is the secret of the two cherub. And the point right between them is the little Aleph. This is the Vav. Because... The Vav, Vav, is, there's a little Olive. There's an Olive there, okay? But it's connected by two Vavs. What is the two Vav? Vav in Hebrew, in Kabbalah, is, and Hashem spoke between the two chair. This is the secret of the Vav. See how this this valve and this valve protect the olive in the middle? 
that's the point between the chair. Yeah. So, um, now, what in the world is going on? So now we know everything there is to know about the olive, right? Actually, actually, it is so in depth. We just kind of scratch the surface of it. I'm, I'm telling you, it, the, the amount of information on the on the olive, the little olive there, it 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 blew my mind so so bad. Um, um, so now we're going to uh, go a little bit into <coughs> by Yikra, um and the apples in the orchard, and we're going to discuss what is going on with. Uh, the carbon note, because Malkut is the kingdom, and you're bringing it to the king, right? The kingdom bringing kingdom to the king. That it. So the kingdom, as we learned in biology, remember it was kingdom, phylum, class, order, genus, species, or something like that. Y'all remember that? That's closer than I can go. Uh, but but the bottom level was kingdom, and, I, and you know, and and now when you look at that, you're going. Well, I wonder why they called it that. Genus Class, order, genus, phylum, species. Right? It's something like that. Anyway, the bottom was kingdom. So even here, Malkut, the bottom was kingdom. So how do you elevate the kingdom? Rakarais. <laughs> All right. Well, Every every time you eat, something gave its life for you to eat. So, if you look at sacrifices, oh, it's a it's only done. It's a ritual thing only done. Sacrifice is taking something's life. Well, you know we're gonna go eat after this, and something had to die for us to eat. If we eat chicken, a chicken had to die. If we, whatever, all right. Unless you're eating tofu. <laughs> unless, you're, unless you're eating tofu, but the tofu had to die. But but if you're eating broccoli, the broccoli had to be cut, and the broccoli. I mean, I mean, because and what about the salt? If you mind the salt, the salt is no. You know, I mean. You're taking it. Yeah. So you're going to take it one way or the even other. The, even the cow or the animal. The who animals eats the grass. Eat that. Who the grass sucks it out of the the minerals out of the ground. So, so what you're, makes you're what makes all. that cow what makes an animal kosher is if it has a rumen because it can because the food can go down and then it can bring the food back up and chew it. That's called elevation. Mm -hmm. Animals that can elevate. Or, or, or like a dove that has a crawl, he can bring it up and chew it in his crawl with the rocks, with the gravel. He's elevate there. The animals are elevating it by nature. We have to elevate it on purpose. We have to have a consciousness. We ele elevate it through the form of prayer. Speaking exactly. Okay, because we're on that level. So. As is known, the divine name Havaya Yudhe Vavhe is a five principle of the part Sufim. The upper Yud, a recon pin, the tip of the Yud, and the Yud is, is Ava, and the He is Ima, and the the, va, uh, the Vav is Za, or the six middle Sirot, and the final He is Malkut, right? <laughs> now, corresponding to these, these are the five kingdoms, all right? The inanimate, or the mineral, the vegetable, the uh, the articulate, I man, and the top is the soul. All right. So, from each of these four levels, there are the elements that need to be elevated and refined. Now, uh, I'm going to throw you a little curveball here. the The lowest level is is the mineral. All right. And I was reading a story in the Zohar, and Lot's wife turned to soft. And when God tells you you should not look behind, it's you should not peer at the Shekhinah. You should not look at the Shekhinah. And we know that was a problem with Abel, caused Abel's death. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And we know Moses rectified that at the goal at the at the fiery bush because he would not look. That's one of the things he wouldn't do. He would not look. Right. So he rectified that because he was a, a part of the part Sufim of Abel. 
or the, uh, or the fractal so soul, soul yeah. of Abel. All right. So this is so what happened. Lot's wife, her her soul fell to the lowest level of in, inanimacy, salt. That's how. That's why she turned to salt. All right. So you have the salt, which is the mineral kingdom. You have the uh, the wine and oil, which is the vegetable kingdom. You have the animals, which is the uh, uh, an animal kingdom there. And then then man is the art, uh, articulate kingdom. And these are these are the four uh, levels aspects. So <clears throat> you have the nephesh, the bottom, the ruach, the neshama, and the chaya, and the soul is the yachaya. Right? So, what are we doing when we eat? What are we doing when we sacrifice an animal? Because what happens when when a righteous man dies, where does his soul go? Gone eaten. Gone eaten. What happens to the fractal sparks of the soul of a wicked man? Have you ever heard of the term Gilgal? Mm -hmm. Transmigration of the soul. Yes. Remember, we studied that before. All right. Well, guess where they transmigrate? To the mineral level. And to the animal level. And to the vegetable level. This is why Giannis and Yambrus created the golden calf. To elevate the soul of their wicked grand great grandfather that was trapped in the gra in the in the in the vegetable level. Now, this is a very deep class. All right? So, be, because those sparks have to be elevated, so the cow's going to elevate it for them because they didn't do it. Right. So, this is part of the torture of a soul. All these levels. Because everything has a nephesh. Where does it come from? Will it ever get to Guinea then? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. There's there's parts of it that, that have to that have to do that too. But these are fractal sparks of the soul. Right. All right. So every time you eat, that's why the Torah says a man who doesn't play uh, pray over his food before he eats is an idolater, because he's taken in the essence of that evil spark, and it nourishes him. So unless you elevate that evil spark, retrieve that spark out of that food to nourish your body, now you have elevated it, you have changed it. Every time you eat. Because where did all the plants and animals come from? We talked about this earlier. From the seed of from the from Noah, from Yesod, from the seed that from the seed of God. He in the seed of all living things. Because everything, it's only only thing here is he and his name. Mm -hmm. Only thing here is the soul yeah. of creation. And everything is connected to it. So that was the wine in the vineyard was the vegetable level? Everything. It's the story all playing itself out. And, and the this, animals were the animal level? Yeah. And, and, the, and, and, the, and, and this whole part <laughs> here is, is Adam, who is now Moses, is picking up all the pieces. And he's telling the people how to pick them all up. Picking up all the neat so so all the fallen sparks. And in this, you're going to find that there's the 288, the 288, and the 320. We're fixing to get to that. Of how this is the secret of the carbon note. And the secret of the red heifer is the 280 of the sparks that fell in the tohu. Mm -hmm. All right? And, because, and we're going to get to that. Because there was the golden calf, there has to be the red heifer. Because the red heifer has to atone for all those sparks. But the carbon note and all these other things and the sacrifices are going to atone for the 320 and the 288. All right? Let's continue. This is the mystical meaning of the verse. A fire offering and aroma that is pleasing to God. That's why I read that a while ago. Remember how many times I read that? Mm -hmm. It's at the end of every one of those sections. After you read the salt, after you read the after you read the flour and the meal, after you read the oil and the wine, after you read the animal, after you read the bird, after you read everything, that's how it ends. Because the word fire offering 
course, ish, ishay corresponds to the nephesh. It comes from the word woman isha. The fire uh, is a symbol of malchut, because malchut is the phrase consuming fire. The word of Roma, uh, riach, corresponds to ruach, which in, in turn is the word of Yitzira. That is pleasing, is the, corresponds to the part sufim of ima. It's the neshama, that is what's pleasing to God. Uh, to God corresponds to the inner soul of neshama, which is Abba. <coughs> And we have, con there and there, throughout that, you have constructed not only the four levels of the soul, God reconstructed the four levels of the soul in, in, those, in those Hebrew words uh, that are translated a fire offering and aroma that is pleasing to God. He has also rectified the whole thing. That's why, um, uh, even in that prayer of the RE a while ago, we and, and may our study be uh, as sweet aroma of incense, be a sweet aroma. All right now, uh, now, now, what we'll do is is uh, is we get into um, what's the difference between kosher and unkosher? Why now did God tell you there's things you can't eat and there's things you can't eat? Because we're dealing with Noga. Noga is where, you know, there's four levels, there's four levels of Klippa in that, or five levels of Klippa, and the outer level is Noga. The other ones you the other ones you can't get into. It's too contaminated. It's too, it's too evil, it's too hot. Alright? So we're dealing with Noga. So all the things you can eat are Noga. You can extract the sparks out of Noga. Because you're trying to elevate that soul, that soul spark that happened at the... At, this is the secret of the elevation of the kings of Edom. This is, this is what the Arif goes into right here. Talks about the kings of Edom. Uh, this, this goes all the way back. This story is the secret of Adam picking up the pieces... From the fall of Genesis 36 is what. So, in every one of the sacrifices and in everything you eat, this is going on. So, if you're eating things that cannot be eaten, or if you're mixing food like we've talked about that cannot be mixed, you know you cannot bring something from the lower to something in the higher. You can't mix this and that mm -hmm. because you're bringing something from a lower realm or an outer realm of Klippa, and mixing it with something from the holy realm, which is uh, to, uh, Tikkun. You can't mix the two. Mm -hmm. So this is, what is, this is what is going on uh, with all these uh, uh, sacrifices. This, this is called carbon or carbon note, which means to bring close. You're bringing it closer to its root, closer to God, closer to rectification. That, so not only when we pray and when we try to elevate ourselves, if we elevate ourselves, everything that we ate that day has to elevate too. So if we've eaten something that's a de-elevator, you can't elevate de-elevation. Like sausage. Yes. Like if you had a, a ham sandwich, well you just stuck yourself in a level of klepa that you can't pull yourself out of because you're taking that to nourish yourself. So what is the seat? So so what they do? They they, they took the they took the, the fat all the fatty things the liver, the the lung the, the diaphragm the flank the tail fat, um, the kidneys and all these different things and they burned it on the altar. The fatty part. And that was the offering, carbonate. And they put this, they put salt on it. They put wine on it. They put oil on it. They even you know they made bread with flour and oil. And they put burnt flour and oil. And and then they sometimes they did birds and did the duck because they're they're doing every level. It's not because the rich had animals and the poor just had flour. They're they're doing tikkun on every single level of every spark of every fallen spark. So why do you fast? Somebody 
Somebody get real smart and tell me. Why is fasting carbonate? Why is fasting a sacrifice? What is going on? You're feeding yourself. No, you're not eating at all. What? Well, you're feeding yourself, not physically, but spiritually. No, okay. no, no. Okay. You're making room for further elevation. If you're not eating, you're, something you're has to be burned. You're burning calories. Oh, that's right, that's right. You're burning oh. calories. What is, how are you burning calories? Burn fat. You're you burning. are burning your own fat. fat. That is the secret to fasting. You have become the, the sacrifice. That is when you are a sacrifice, when you fast and you're burning your own fat. That's why they burned the fat for the carbon note. That's why they burned the fat. Yes. For, for what reason? I mean, what are you saying? Well, you're saying instead of for burning the fat. Instead of for, yeah, so instead of, instead of, Instead of uh, a prelude to fasting, they a, were this was yeah. This is a prelude to fasting. Now, now fasting is the same thing. Because there's words. no temple, there's yeah, no you can't yeah, sacrifice yeah, yeah. your. That's right. You're yeah. so now you your, are the fasting. The, you you are putting yourself on there, and everything that you've eaten is stored in your fat. Right. From mineral to vegetable to animal to you yourself and your soul. All five levels covered under a fast. Was it, was it the Ari that fasted six days and only ate on Shabbat? It was the <coughs> Rebbe Nachman. Rebbe Rebbe so this is one of the things um, going on with that's deep into this Parsha. Um, let's check my time here. 7.01. Okay. Moving forward. Um, in this part it says uh, do not make any flower offering that you bring to, to God Hametz that, that you bring to God Hametz for you must not offer leaven or honey and fire to God now I'll just kind of give you the inside track on this real quick um, this is uh, Hametz is, is leaven mm -hmm. and that's uh, judgment okay and honey is severe judgment Severe judgment, but but it, it's but you can you know you there's things there's what do you, why do you eat honey on Rosh Hashanah? Because mm -hmm. it's being judged. Mm -hmm. Everything's being judged. Who was the judge of Israel? Moses. He had lots of hair. Samson. Samson. Out of the eater comes something sweet. Get the riddle? He's the judge. Honey, severe judgment. That's what he's bringing. He's bringing out yes. onto the Philistines. Yes. Out, of out, yes. Of yes. out of the lion, Judah, Israel, yeah. Yeah. comes something. You know, something out of the eater comes, comes something sweet. Yeah. Yeah. See? The Torah is so perfect. So, um, the. Uh, this is the, uh, let me find it, find it right here. Um, the mir numerical value of honey is 306. Um, and uh, plus the word for honey, uh, 14. Three, 320. Um, there are 320, 320 states of mature, severe judgment. The number is 306 in the numerical value for the word honey. Plus 14, as we have explained, uh, the show, is the shofar of Rosh Hashanah. The numerical value of the first two, the word shofar, shin, vav, 306, is the same for honey. If you break the word shofar down. Hmm. And added to this 14 are the 14 joints in the hand that grab the shofar. Which is 320 coming against the 300, this three, rectifying these 314, three. 314, which is Metatron. And, and 314, which is Metatron. So, anyway. What are the joints again? There's 14 joints in the hand, which is what grabs the shofar. All right? 
and together they add up to 320. As for the other letters of the word shofar, pay rush, they manifest state severe judgments as is known. Um, so this is why the shofar is blown at the time of judgment. Because it's in the in the So the honey and the shofar have the same up, yeah, the same. Which comes up to three twenty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, I kinda went through the I I uh I went through the mineral kingdom and and, and all that thing uh, with uh, speed <laughs> with uh, a, a, a person and it goes into therefore when a man sins and he does not uh, repent of his sins and then if something you know and the animal soul causes him to sin the nephish causes him to sin then he's gonna he he does some animal time, so to speak. Therefore, uh, this uh, this has to be this has to be cleansed out. Now, I, I was reading a pretty cool thing last night. Um, the the fire the fiery river of Gehenna. Uh, the righteous bathe in it like a hot tub, and but it doesn't burn. They cleanse them, they cleanse and purify themselves in it, where the wicked are burned. So, uh, yeah, you, you don't get out of that. Um, and I also found here, Russell, uh, a deal on on the prayers, uh, on the sacrificial service. Uh, one uh, one uh, is uh, the Shema is is recited, and one is the Amidah is is recited. Um, there are several things that uh, um, what page is that? it's on a three, uh, 533 <coughs> uh, all of these aspects are necessary know that when the sparks of light from the world of Tohu fell into the realm, realm of evil some fell into the inanimate kingdom some to the vegetable kingdom some to the animal kingdom, and some to the articulate animal kingdom. Thus our sages state, oh, the articulate animal. there is no blade of grass below that does not have a spiritual angel above it, which activates its growth. This refers to the sparks that fell. They are the agents that cause everything to grow until a human comes along and consumes it and <coughs> elevates it by then separating it from good and evil. So, this is the whole going back into the eating and the knowing in the in in, in the garden. What is an articulate animal? Animal. Probably angelic. An articulate human is 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 this to me. It's making a separation in between a. Um, <laughs> there's something above a, a human that is uh, just articulate, or is articulate is a human, or is, is there articulate human, I don't know, I or is there articulate human, and then there's a, another kind of human. Is there? That's what I'm getting at. It, is, is it? Is it? Is it, it, it doesn't go into it. Doesn't go. It doesn't. No. It doesn't make any distinction. It just says articulate human. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when the temple stood, the sacrifice caused the sparks to ascend. Nowadays, our prayers take place of the sacrifice. Therefore, the prayers are divided into two parts, action and speech. And, um, and so, uh, what's, what, what, what's coming up is, uh, is, is Passover. Um, the, uh, there's a whole section in here on oaths. And it is very difficult. Um, the the oaths are also a part of the kings of Edom in the fall. Are you saying oath? Oath, oath like taking an you know, oath. You know, because it goes into, and if a man should take an oath, and if he should do this, and if he should and, do that. And that's one of the biggest stumbling blocks for Noahides. Yeah. For who? Noahides. Um, and, and, and this, it, it the oaths, <laughs> it says there are two types of oaths, which are really four. But they all refer 
They all refer to an oath not to eat, an oath to eat, an oath that he did not eat, and an oath that he ate. And so even the oaths go back to eating knowing. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's all wrapped up in, in, in the same thing here. Um, it's... Uh, It all has to do with the life force, and, and, and it's, just, it's just difficult. Um, this is because the kings become rectified uh, and being impregnated within Avanima and then providing true eating and true sanctity. Because eating and, and the act of and, and sanctity do not reach from this level, therefore the, the, the two letters Vav He, Vav He, Mm -hmm. um, refer to towards evil meaning I will not eat uh, that is it does not provide sparks of the kings trapped inside the e evil with real eating I mean it's, it's just it's way difficult mm -hmm. way difficult All right. I'd like to ask a simple question okay <laughs> how do you bless your food how do you bless it proper way um, blessing your food there's um, you, you can say what what, what I do is I say Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Halam Habarei Adakol. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, King of the Universe, Creator of everything. And 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 I was that was taught to me by you. And and I say Creator of everything. That way I cover everything. <laughs> because if you just say Hamotzi Lekim Min Haretz over the bread, or Barei Parei Agafin over the wine, and you're eating steak. You missed it. You missed it. Well, bread, uh, technically, bread is supposed to supersede everything. If Once you, you eat you bread, can, everything else just went with the bread. You, you can, but you, that's one you, way. You can do it. that, you know. Yeah, and, because the cattle eat the grass or the wheat. But but I never, yeah. but, but because I don't always eat bread with my meal. That's true. And that's one thing. You know, I don't always to, eat bread with my meal. If I'm having tacos, I'm not having bread. That's true, and then you have to have it. You have to have another blessing. So, so that's what I do. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the Universe, Creator of everything. That's what I do. All right, let's. Uh, I've, I've got some. Uh, oh, we wanted to. Uh, there's, uh, there's a little known about the golden calf, right? I mean the red heifer, blah, blah, blah. Red heifer, 188. Except if you have a book like this. Except everybody thinks they have it until it gets a couple years old. And then uh, okay. What was the file? Because the answer, because the golden calf, which was to the side of the left, the side of Guru, the bull is the other side of the left, whence the calf emerged. There are four aspects of the left. A bull, a cow, a calf, and a heifer. Which are Hokma, Bina, Teferit, and Malchut of that side. These of the left. It is written, for they, for, for they had the face of an ox on the left. And an Aaron who is on the right, and the left was included in, whence it emerged. Therefore, he offered as a sin offering a calf as the one he made. That is why the spirit of defilement became stronger and ruled again over the world as before. For when Israel committed the sin of the golden calf, they drew upon themselves the evil inclination as before. And when Israel became purified and wanted to purge himself, they, they, uh, they had to offer a goat being part of the evil inclination that, that said, and that said the... the the uh, the deal there. Uh, let's see. Now the red heifer. Why the red heifer? In a red heifer, faultless without blemish, is compared to the calf and the lamb, which is which is cleansed and roasted, just like uh, they roasted just just like the Passover deal. Um, the heifer was unclean because it's from the side of Guvaro. By burning her, the ashes became clean. 
because it was carbon oak. Mm -hmm. She had to be burned to, to ashes, like the verse says, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. When water is sprinkled on the ashes, which is hesed, they become, she becomes clean. This is the secret of clean water in the verse, water of purifying sin. After judgment was executed on the heifer, she became clean, and uh, the, the, Holy, the Holy Spirit of, had dominion. And the spirit of defilement was no longer in the camp. So, uh, basically, to, to, to get rid of the, the golden calf and the spirit of defilement in the camp, because the, there's a bull, an ox, a calf, and a heifer. They had to use the heifer to overcome the calf. And because gold is from Guvarot, where is red from? Guvarot. Guvarot. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like if you get bit by a snake, you use antivenom. You use right. venom. So if you get bit by the, by the calf, you use the heifer. The gold and the red. So, right. so, so what they had, they, they mitigated it with its own self. So then what did they do to mitigate with the bull? For what? Well, well, what they did with the bull, they killed 70 bulls on which day? Mm. On tabernacles. Right? Yeah. And they killed them. Um, I, don't, I don't remember. Let me see. Let me see if I can remember this. Let's see. They, they killed them for seven days. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. On the seventh day, they killed seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, fifteen, sixteen, twenty-six, thirty-six, forty-five, forty-five, and fifteen, sixty. Sixty. I'm off one. I'm off ten, but anyway. Maybe. It's anyway, they did it. Uh, the, or, or or maybe oh eight days. So, maybe that moves. Maybe, maybe that moves day. here, and then that moves there or something. But anyway, they did it in descending order. I can't remember exactly the, the number, but they took seventy, and, and and then they divided it up, and they killed them in descending order. That'll equal 15 all the way across. Why did they do that? Equal 15. Because that was for the other nations. Ah. And so what they did, they killed them in descending order. In other words, taking power from the other side. Follow me? No, it's kind of like a vacuum. It was like sucking it yeah, out of there. They were sucking the power of the nations out. And because yeah. and, Israel was reigning at the time, this Solomon did this, mm -hmm. and so he knew the formula. He knew he had to feed the other side. You know, you mm -hmm. always have to feed the other side. All right, because if you don't, if you don't feed the dog, it will bite you. All right, and so as, as he was as he was feeding the other side, he was doing it, but he was doing it in a manner that would decrease their power. So that's where the seventy bulls came from. That's when they did the the bulls. All right, I got a few things. I'll go over here. And by Yikra out of Zohar, I'll just have to flip through here and find them. I've just kind of got them, kind of got them highlight, uh, underlined here. Russell, if you want to, if you want to turn that off till I find it. No, it's all right. Okay. I mean, it's, it's 300 pages, and I'll just have to. Uh, well, if it turns it off, it'll create a new one. Oh, will uh, it? After so many, yeah, after, after right. so long. So I can turn it off and then turn it back on. It'll be the same one. But if I turn it off for a period of time, it'll create a new um, one. And Vayikra 1 2, where it says of the cattle, when it says of the cattle, this includes everything. The term of the cattle means everything. Yeah. Uh, if, it, it, it could mean bird, it could mean flower, but of, of the cattle was a generic term for all that. Um, we, learned, we, we learned that the thought of the burnt offering 
rises to the place of the thought and draws near to the ending of thought. So when you're thinking about do just the thought of doing it already puts the sacrifice up to the level of thought. Which is what, Bria? Which is Bria. Yeah. So then when it, when it's in Bria, it just goes to Atsalut. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. So the word, okay, uh, the, the word virgin of Israel. If the term virgin of Israel is used, it's, it's referring to Bathsheba, the daughter of seven. If the term the virgin is used, it's referring clearly to the congregation of Israel, which is Malchut, which is her. So, there's, there's another where, where the word virgin in Scripture has been perverted uh, to mean something other than either the children of Israel or to Bathsheba. I thought that was a pretty good find. When they use the term, uh, but if a, in, in Vayikra 22.13, in this Parsha, but if a priest's daughter to be a widow or a divorce or have no child, the word priest daughter is a holy soul. That's code word holy soul. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and it, it goes on to explain here. But if a priest daughter be a widow or divorced or have no child, a priest daughter is a holy soul, also called the king's daughter. For the holy soul issues from the union of the king and the queen, Zeron, Pen, and Malchut, as we have explained. As the body below is comprised of male and female, the soul above, together with the body, is male and female, and the soul being male and fem female body. Um, this is the meaning of the words, be a widow, to wit, the soul should be widowed without a body. So if a soul doesn't have a body, it's widowed. See what I'm saying? Um, and, 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 with, and if it didn't cleave to it or die or divorced, it is, uh, removed from the, it is divorced from the portion of the holy name. So that, that whole thing there. And then it says, therefore, if it returns to the Father's house, what is returning? The soul. Returning to the Father's house. Um, and Vayikra 20, verse 17. If a man shall take his sister... A man is the Holy One, blessed be he, and shall take his sister, the congregation of Israel, the Shekinah. Chapter 20? 13. No way. Yeah. Wow. That's not Vayikra, is it? Vayikra 20, 13. Well, Vayikra is, is uh, Leviticus. Yeah, Vayikra is the whole book of Leviticus. Ah. Oh, you're talking about Leviticus. You're not talking about. The I'm talking about. Uh, hey, I'm talking about Vayikra. The word Leviticus is Vayikra. This is uh, a poor man has the humblest spirit. Therefore, he brings the smallest offering because he has less need to repent. A poor man, a poor man does not sin much. Huh. But a rich man is arrogant and will sin even more. Therefore, uh, if his Vayukra one three, this is in our portion. If his offering be a burnt offering from the herd, um, and what is the difference? to bring a burnt offering of the herd to the flock of the birds. If they are the same, why do they separate one from the other, seeing they all come from the same thing? Namely, a burnt offering. He says, who can afford it? Offers it from the herd. If he cannot, he brings it from the flock. Thus it is written, if he be poor, he must, he, and, and, and his means do not suffice, for the Holy One, blessed be he, does not overload a man with something he cannot bear. Let's see what else we got here. 
And if and if his offering be a peace offering. And Elohim said, Let there be a ferment in the midst of the waters. Come and see. When the Holy One, blessed be He, created the universe, He created seven ferments above, created seven lands below. As you all know, we have seven continents. He had seven seas. As you all know, we had seven seas. Created seven rivers, seven days, seven weeks, seven years, seven times, seven millennia, to which the world exists. It will endure for 6,000 years, for it is 1,000 in ruins. The Holy One, blessed be He, founded every seventh that is all mentioned above. I thought that was pretty cool. Because you can see you can see a lot of that here. Let's see. Vayikra 4.2. This is in our partial. If a soul shall sin. Now, and it goes on to discuss. How, how can a soul sin? We learn that when the Holy One, blessed be He, takes out the soul to bring it down amongst men, He advises it with many promises and many punishments so that it will observe His precepts. Furthermore, and all your souls went through this, He passed it through a thousand and eighty worlds to have delight and see in them the honor of those who study Torah. It stands before the king with a prescient garment of a worldly shape, with a precious supernal garment. It daily beholds the king, king, king's glory and adorns it with many crowns. When the time comes for the soul to descend to the world, he fixes it in an, in, in an abode in the Garden of Eden for 30 days to behold the preciousness of the Master of Righteousness. It, it, it then rises to a place above, Afterwards, it descends into the world. The Holy King adorns it with seven crowns, and it comes into a man's body. When it, is, when it is in a man's body and sins in the world and is occupied with darkness, the Torah then wonders at it and says, Why, with all this glory and perfection which the Most High has perfected it, does it sin before Him? If a shoal shall, shall sin, where does it sin from? In other words, you know, the uh, when, when when somebody sins down here, the so, the soul that we already have has already seen everything there is to see. It just cannot remember it, you know. And it is sent down here to study Torah to elevate the sparks. It's sent down here on a mission, on a mission from God to elevate sparks. That's what it's doing here. And so when it sins or doesn't elevate it, the upper world says, "How in the world could it possibly do that?" You know. <laughs> After knowing all this, um, <coughs> this is uh, you remember you, you know our our prayer. Oh, this is this is pretty cool too. The nakedness of your father and the nakedness of your mother you shall not uncover. When the evil inclination grows strong within a man, it does through the immoral sexual conduct alone. All sin are attached to nakedness, which uh, you shall not uncover. And this is the reason for repentance. All sins of the world are connected. All sins of the world are connected to the uncovering of nakedness, such as the mother, Malchut, is uncovered the sins of her nakedness, and which is the children of Israel. So what what you're doing is is your is you're taking garments off Bina, Malchu, Israel, the mother, the daughter, this and that, the other. This is the secret of you shall not take the mother bird together with her young. There's a scripture in in Devarim 26, 22:6, where it just says. God's going through all the precepts. Don't do this and don't do that. And you can't do this and you can't do that. <laughs> and then it, it says, and you can't take a mother bird together when they're young. But that all has that all has to do with sexual sin. Um, the righteous will flourish like a date palm. Planted in the house of the Lord, he will flourish like cedar lemon. What does that mean? Here's the answer. The righteous man 
flourishes like a palm tree because a palm will, will grow for 70 years which is the secret of Malhut, the secret of the 70 nations he will flourish like a palm tree this is the secret and after 70 years they were a Babylonian exile they were brought out he will grow like a cedar in Lebanon what is a cedar? the Holy One of Israel what is Lebanon? the supernal garden of Eden. Those who are planted in the house of Hashem at the time of the Messiah they will flourish in the courts of Elo our Elohim and all of the revival of the dead will, and it says, and they will bring forth fruit in old age. This is the secret of the resurrection. So anyway, that's pretty cool. You know, we say that every Sabbath in Psalm 92. And so I always think it's neat when we when we find things that we do all the time in here and then we we get a uh, we get an understanding of what's going on. Um, of course there's many, many, many things in there that we could go over, but we'd be here all night. Well we went about an hour and a half tonight. All right, any questions? What answers? about the, uh, the <coughs> when you're getting back to a bull, a cow, or an ox? Uh, uh, yes, or a heifer. Calf. Well, I don't know. It's a, it's a bull. I'm trying to get the sequence down. Oh. It's the bull, the cow, the the calf, and the heifer. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm And the heifer was what, Sphero? Oh, I don't, I didn't, it, it, it didn't, was, it, it's, was, it's all, it's all good. Oh, there was, there was, the uh, it was Teferit, Malkut. It has to be Malkut. Yeah, it was Malkut. Yeah, that's what it was. Um, let's see. That was in... That was in... Hukma, Bina, Teferi, and Malkut. Hold on. Yeah. I'll find it for you. Too late. We already got it. There are... <laughs> there. <clears throat> turn right to it. <clears throat> there are four aspects. A bull, a cow, a calf, and a heifer. Hukma, Bina... Bull father, cow mother, Okma right. Bina, calf to ferret, Beauty, yeah. heifer, mouth. Okay. All right. Um, next week. Okay, so what, if, if you don't remember anything out of this partial, remember this. All that's going on is the story of the Garden of Eden. Adam has come down into the form of a fractal Moshe uh -huh. who is going to get all of the Tohu uh -huh. and all of the Tikkun uh -huh. and try to fix it. What is he trying to fix? His own mistake of the 130 year separation from Eve in the river where he was emitting light and creating disembodied souls. Mm -hmm. This is the secret of the Heir of Ra. This is the secret of the Tower of Babel. This is the secret of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's all the same thing. It's all these, it's all the, the other side that has fed off of the uh, emission of light that's clean, they're clinging on to holiness. So, be, but because it's the backside of Da'at, it's Moses' Da'at. He's got to take it. He can't just take his front side of Da'at out. He's got to take his backside of Da'at out because it's one thing. You can't just take half your brain, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? So he's got to take it out. So Adam is taking everything out because it all fell from Da'at, which is, was the upper Yisot, <coughs> from, from the eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So now they 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 the God put the fail safe mechanism in. Okay. It's got it's going to fall again cuz it has to. Mm -hmm. So when it does here's how you fix it. Here's how you elevate the sparks, Adam. You know, or Moshe or Adam or Moshe, whatever I want to call you today. So you build a place and you need, then you go, need to go to the place, the Evenstia, 
-hmm. which is a place that I've started everything. And, and, and you build this structure and you put these certain items in this structure because those are the same items I got up here. All right? And then you've got to get all the sparks that fell out. You've got to gather all that stuff up. Well, here's how you do it. You bring this and you bring that. And you bring this and you bring that. And you kill this with this and you kill this with that. And you add it all up together and then you burn it because that's going to elevate it up to me. And, and, and that's how we're going to pick all this stuff up all the tinker toys, we're going to put it all back together and we're going to fix it. And so, what did they do? They did it and they did it and they did it. And as soon as they forgot the Torah, as soon as they moved away from Torah, the temple, boom, destruction, exile, once again. They fix it up, fix it up, fix it up, brought them back out of exile, fix it up, boom, exile again. How many exiles are there? Three. Three. Oh, four. <coughs> four. Egypt is the fifth, but we don't count the fifth because they are all considered Egyptian. We have the Greek, the Persian, the Babylonian, and what's the last one? Sure. Roman. Roman. The one we're in. yud Hey vav Hey. Now, they elected a new pope today. His name is Francis. I did some research. The last holy emperor of Rome was named Francis. So, perhaps this could be the end one. So, what starts, because it, it's a pattern. It, it didn't matter if you're on this side or that side. The pattern's the pattern. Mm -hmm. huh? You know? So so maybe maybe we're we're, we're right there near yeah, the end. That he was he was Francis the first, right? Francis the second was the was the last Francis. And so this guy's Francis the third. Well, yeah. But he those, said he those named were, himself those, Fra Francis. He named himself Francis II. No, he's named himself Francis the first. Oh, Francis the first. That's what. I, yeah. That's what well, I mean. there there's there has been a Francis the first, and there was a Francis the second. Francis the second was the last but holy no. emperor of Rome. So I don't know. It may have something to do with it. It may not. I just thought it was... That's I, interesting. I thought mm -hmm. the irony was, was there. But um, um, anyway, that's, that's Torah. Uh, that was Torah A. Mm -hmm. That the, is the Aleph. And so that stuff's, that stuff's pretty difficult. Um, now, uh, when it comes to Passover, we're coming to Passover. I'll briefly go over Passover. Now that we know what we're, what we're, what we're killing... And now that we know what we are eating, um, the question is, who's coming over for dinner? <laughs> Who are you eating? All right. Is this Tuesday? Now, um, we must kill the Passover lamb after 12 o'clock on the 14th. Nissan. That's Monday. Monday. So we have to kill it that afternoon. We must eat it before midnight. Monday. We must roast it over fire. Um, one of the things that is important is there must be a RSVP sent out and only those who RSVP can eat it. In other words, you have to be a member of the group and you, you have to be a member of, you can't just show up and eat it. You have to say, I'm coming. Um, there's, there's a lot of uh, stuff going on behind that um, uh, because you're signifying that you are a part of the group of pa pa Passover, Pesach. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that is, it, that's very important. Um, um, as far as the killing of the thing, a, an impure person cannot do it. In other words, if you've been in contact with a corpse, a dead person in the last 30 days, or there are eight rodents and reptiles that you have to refrain from. I think Russell and I are, are, are clear, clear on that. Um, um, eight rodents and reptiles? Yeah. like if a gecko's in the house? Uh, no, probably like a snake. You killed a snake or something outside. Um, you must do it for its own sake, for the sake of heaven. Mm -hmm. Do you say Nissan 14? Yeah. That starts at sundown on Sunday. Nissan 14 does. Mm -hmm. We have to do it on the day of Nissan. 
So, so that would noon. be that'd Monday noon. Monday noon. Monday noon. noon. Okay. Yeah, Monday noon. Um, you must wash your hands and feet. This is for the killers, mm -hmm. the sacrificers. You must wash your hands and feet before you do it. And... Um, There is a part, uh, there's a, the Paschal Lamb, and then there's the uh, Chagigah, the other one you kill. And, uh, no, he's not really, he don't get to escape. Um, and then you put the, you put the uh, blood on the altar, and you put the uh, blood in a bowl, and then the parts are burnt on an altar. This is, this, these parts that are burnt on the altar is called the Olah. What are you going to use for an altar? Uh, we'll, we'll get we'll we'll get a big flat rock, and the hola is from the word hola. Hola, cost. This is where you get the term holocaust. All is burnt. The secret of the word holocaust is all is burnt, and so that is. The fat of the of of the uh, um, thing. So, um, what was going on in Germany were they they were the living sacrifice. They were the holocaust. <clears throat> All was burnt. So, gives you a whole different perspective of what they became. They became the Paschal Lamb. Mm. Which puts a whole new twist on uh, what the Christianity thinks. So, <coughs> um, anyhow, we will be in contact, I guess, with everybody for Pesach. And whatever we need, we'll get to working on. And so we're meeting then on Tuesday. Oh, and we got to roast it. Monday. We have to... Huh? Monday. Yeah, Monday. It has to be Monday. We have to eat it Monday night. It has to be eaten by Monday night. Okay. And so we have to uh, roast it over a fire, and it has to be on one. It has to be kind of a turny thing, you know. Rotisserie. Oh. So it has to be a rotisserie, the, rotisserie style. The the whole thing, legs and legs and all, have to be on it, and the legs have to be bound. Mm -hmm. And um, um, then we have to burn. Uh, the other stuff, and we'll do the. Do you blood. burn the other stuff? Uh, do you slaughter, burn the the fat and everything, then cook the 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 animal, and then then what you don't eat, you burn that at a second time, or do you burn it all together? Um, that I don't know. I think that procedure. I think I if it seems to me there's uh, some kind of memory of you burn the fat. Then you cook the animal, and then you burn what's, burn what's left. left. But if you could get confirmation on that, that'd be good. Okay. I had all day Monday off, and then I changed it because I needed all day Tuesday off, so I'm only taking half a day on Monday off. I had to work till 11.30 on Monday. But that'd be good because mm -hmm. you'll still be home. <clears throat> so, and and uh, the tour is amazing. The Savior is amazing. We'll see you next week.